OK, so we are now recording and welcome to the March 29th, 2023 ECAC meeting. Uh, we do not have either our chair or our vice chair present this evening. So we are going to start with an election for a chair pro tem for just this one meeting. So um, I will start by asking, is there anybody who wants to self nominate before anyone gets into nominating somebody else? So if anyone would like to self nominate themselves, um, please identify who would be interested in sharing this one meeting with not a heavy agenda. <laughs> I'm trying to sell it. I'll Steve. give it a try. I, I nominate myself. Excellent. All right. All right. I All right. second. I third and fourth. <laughs> okay. okay, let's have some competition right. here. Let's have. A <laughs> I'd like to see it like a campaign poster, or maybe like a <laughs> yeah, exactly. one of those but videos where you're like shooting a car. <laughs> What's your platform, Steve? <laughs> okay. All right. I, okay. I, I can't call for order yet, can I? Not yet. So we <laughs> still have to officially. I'm sorry, but we still have to officially you know, go through the election process. Is there anybody else interested in chairing this meeting this evening? Great, okay. So uh, by voice vote, I will please unmute yourself and by voice vote, I will call your name and you can say yay or nay. Allison. Yay. Selman. Yay. Roof. Yay. Rose. Yay. Gregor. Yay. Drucker. <laughs> yes. Yay. <laughs> I thought yay was more celebratory. We're, we're yay today, <laughs> more <yeah>. exciting. <laughs> okay. Um, Steve, unanimously, you may now take over the duties of chair of this meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, do we have an agenda? I'm not sure I saw an agenda come out. You do. I sent a packet. So you oh, should. You did. I did. Oh, well, then I'm I I sorry. I, oh, I missed. I'm just saying no, but I'm pretty sure it's posted. It's definitely posted. Yeah. Okay. Then I might be need a second here to scramble for that because I did not get it. Let me, okay. I can share. You know what? Let me share the screen. Let's okay. just make if it you easy. Got it handy, that would be fastest. I will just share my screen. And if I didn't, I sincerely apologize. All these meetings you all threw at me this week, plus I've got the Solar Bylaw Working Group this week, so I was trying to keep track of who's doing what. Are you seeing the agenda now? Yes, I okay. am seeing it. Okay, then everyone is seeing it. Okay, have people um, been able to review the minutes? Not if you didn't get a packet. <laughs> that, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so we can put off reviewing the minutes till next meeting? You can, or we can do them... Um, I mean, I can just scroll that through was, them. Sure. What that was a sh kind of a focused meeting. So it was a one hour meeting. It, yeah. They're very short. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Why don't you, if you could bring those up, Stephanie, we'll review yep. them quickly and okay. put those to bed. All right. Just bear with me while I play with my. Wow, and look at that taking notes today. Ah, we Jesse is. Stephanie assigned Jesse before I was boss. Well, he was supposed to be at the last meeting and he didn't right. have his computer. So he was he was the default for today. Yep. Okay. So I'm just gonna scroll and if I'm going too fast, let me know. Do, 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 do. Okay.
go next to the meeting agenda. Uh oh, sorry. Somehow I must have moved. Can you see it now? Uh, yes, we can. Here we go. I'm looking at the items for next meeting, which would be today. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or comments or corrections for the minutes from last week's meeting? I move to approve. That's the word. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Stephanie, could you take the voice vote? Yep. Let me just close out these. I'm sorry. I'm taking notes while I'm okay doing this walking and chewing gum okay so uh voice vote in no particular order allison stay selman yes roof <laughs> is that a yes sorry yes Ru rose yes Breger. yes drucker if i abstain are we going to be in trouble here no no you have five okay I mean, you can still, I think you can vote on the minutes. You can. And we've talked about this before. Yeah. Upstein. Well, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just a majority. And if, yeah, so it's fine. Legally, it's fine. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Okay. That's all right. You're, we can, if you want to abstain, you can. So you have. <laughs> all right. Um, minutes are approved and we can move on. Great. Can you bring up the agenda again, Stephanie? I can. I have to open it again, though. So just bear with me one second. Okay, I'm assuming you're seeing that. Yes, good, thank you. Okay. So it looks like we're at the moment to uh, take any public comments. If any member of the public would like to make a comment, please electronically raise your hand now. There are currently three members of the public attending in addition to our seven members. We don't seem to have any public comment at this time. Okay, then let's move on. Pace update. Don, are you uh, able to give us a pace update today? Yes, I am. Um, very briefly, but I can tell you that Stephanie and I met with um, uh, the executive director uh, of the chamber, Claudia Azmani, and um, we're kind of all in agreement that we are going to put together an event. Um, you know, somebody from Mass Development that Stephanie is in contact with, um, she can fill you in on on what she she's done to reach out to them. Um, and it would be uh, co-sponsored by the chamber. Um, at I, I don't, did we decide exactly where it would be, Stephanie? Was it was it at Kurt Shumway's place at um right there on Route Nine Courtyard? It was, yes, was it I think she had yeah. mentioned that potentially she was going to reach out about it, but I yeah. think she mentioned that as a potential location. Yeah. Um, and so we're in the process of reaching out to uh, mass development and then picking a firm date and we'll move from there. And when we reach out to mass development, we'll 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 also discuss with them the appropriate um, informational package. I won't call it a flyer, I'll call it an info packet um, to be able to be available for the participants. So that is moving forward um, to have an event for business people and developers um, in, in the Amherst community. Question. Go ahead, Andre. Um, I'm sorry, I spaced a little while you were saying where it is. Um, is it in a place where 
some of the features of a high performance building could be demonstrated? No, I don't think so. I, I think don't think courtyard is a high performance building. Yeah, um, I, yeah. If you have a suggestion of a high performance building that would also have, uh, I mean, I don't think it's fixed, Andra. So if we could come up with a locale that had the ability to have enough seating and enough availability of space for, um, you know, hors d'oeuvres or, or whatever is going to be um, available. I, I, certainly I'm prepared to discuss that with Claudia, if we had such a space. Uh, you know, the Hitchcock Claudia. Center comes to mind as a potential location, uh, Andre, now that you said that. How many people, Don, did you say, you hope? I, I think she hopes for a decent turnout. I mean, I think we're planning on, uh, what, what would you say, Stephanie? I don't well, remember how many she said, but I think- She um, talking about, I, as I recall, it was like 30 maybe, maybe, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, she was thinking about a decent number. And I think she was also thinking of it in terms of events that they typically have done or do so she's got sort of a format and I think that's why she thought the courtyard and um, I think what we had talked about for an event was to have um, a business owner who has done has used the PACE program and has you know implemented the you know the um, project project and so that they could maybe present as an example. So even if it weren't held in a space that could be touted as being a, you know, a PACE demonstration project, it might be that we would have somebody, a business owner who could actually do a presentation on what they did. That was part of the, the idea was to sort of have general information and a presentation. Um, but I think, um, and it was only, you know, not a very long event. It was sort of like an hour for mingling cocktails, appetizers, and then an hour for you know, the sort of substance of the, of the event. Uh, that's how Claudia laid it out. So we were yeah. kind of really, you know, we were sort of looking to her as to how she thought it would work and go. Um, I'll follow up with, I did reach out to Mass Development, the woman that I met during the MMA conference and did not hear back from her, unfortunately. However, we actually have a person that we dealt with when we became a PACE community. So I'm gonna reach out to her directly. Instead, I was kind of going through this woman because I felt like I should, because she gave me her card and said, I will pass this information along, but I think it'd be better if I just reach out to the person we dealt with. So I will do that. Um, uh, probably tomorrow, I can reach out to her. All right, well, I think the idea of a location that is in a high performance building is nice, but not critical. And then perhaps a future event could be a tour of a high performance building, perhaps the one in Greenfield that we heard about earlier this year or last year, I guess. Um, any other questions for Don on the PACE meeting? What, tell me again, when did you say that was scheduled for or planned for? In May, but we didn't Just come up May. with a, yeah, no, okay. we didn't come up with the final date. There were a few dates that we were proposing in May. So mass development is really, it's about their availability, so. Okay, so we didn't hear back on that. Mm -hmm. Will it also be available like live streamed or Zoom for people who can't be in person? We didn't discuss that. Okay. Yeah. It's I think a good it depends, idea, but we didn't discuss it, right. It depends on the technology that we have available. Right. Yeah, just curious if it's something that maybe I could lurk in on um, or drop in on remotely. I, I might just be curious. You could actually drop in on physically. Sure. Take advantage of those cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Any other questions for Don on the uh, PACE panel? Great. Sounds exciting. And Dwayne, some solar updates. You're, you're muted. Okay. Yep. Get you every uh, time. 
Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah. Also, I have uh, I don't have a formal update uh, either, uh, but I will will uh, provide some updates on the um, Soda Bylaw Working Group uh, where we stand and um, in our um, time frame going forward, uh, and then just also open it up to any other um, ideas of what we as ECAC should be working on or might work on next with regard to solar. Um, uh, that's separate from the uh, from the work that um, is going on with the solar bylaw. Um, so um, I guess the the charge of the bylaw working group was to come forward with a draft uh, zoning bylaw by and and the deadline was May thirty first, uh, which is fairly fast approaching at this point. Um, it's been become apparent um, that that would be a really tight deadline for us to meet. Um, and the town manager has recognized that and has bestowed an extension to on us. Um, and um, uh, and so the, the especially, you know, there was some concern raised also in the working group about getting feedback from the GZA uh, survey and public public uh, uh, perspectives and so forth that we wanted to incorporate that's going to not be available until the end of April, I think, time frame. Um, and so the whole timing was a little bit um, off kilter uh, for that as well. So uh, with that and the fact that um, um, uh, we've been working diligently but methodically um, and also at the pace that uh, Christine Brest Restrup can really provide to us, and she's done tremendous work, but she's also been uh, short-staffed. Um, and um, so we do have now till the end of the uh, summer, is it, uh, Stephanie? I, I'm blocked on the exact date, uh, but sort of end of summer, uh, September, say, time frame. Um, amongst our work group, we don't necessarily want to take that long. Uh, we want to um, keep moving. Um, uh, expeditiously uh, to get something well prepared uh, to report back as recommendations to to the town manager uh, and the council, I believe. Um, uh, so we don't necessarily we won't necessarily plan to take till the end of the uh, end of the uh, summer, but um, finish it up as quickly as we can um, that we're comfortable with. Uh, I guess sometime during the summer, um, obviously, it becomes harder at times to, to get all together in the summer as well, but we'll we'll work through that. Um, I will say that um, to date, uh, I think the the drafting of the language and we're going sort of section by section, um, a lot of the drafting the land language and review of that and the met method is really the uh, Christine and her group are um, drafting language for us to then review in the meetings. Uh, that's all been going fairly well. Um, I think to date, um, a lot of what we've drafted has has um, uh, um, turned into some interesting discussions, but not a whole lot of of um, areas that we really had to um, discuss, debate, and and try to reach consensus. Um, I think, and that's somewhat on purpose. We've started with some of the easier, uh, more cookie cutter stuff, I guess. Uh, uh, but we do recognize that there's more in front of us uh, that will become more interesting um, uh, in terms of uh, discussions uh, within the working group uh, and, and and the public. Um, uh, part of this will be see what the uh, um, constituents have to say or their perspectives from the survey and, and what we can learn from that. Uh, but um, uh, but there'll be a lot more more coming forward. Um, you know we do obviously we've seen and we uh, and reviewed the maps. The GZA maps uh, that ECAC has as well in terms of the the uh, land that we have in in Amherst, um, the the sort of um, two thirds that are kind of off limits for various different not off limits but just technically not um, uh, feasible or by regulation not feasible, uh, leaving a relatively um, smaller portion of Amherst that would really be um, subject to this type of zoning. Um, we did have a good meeting. We, we've been filling in, uh, not necessarily every week, but every number of meetings. Uh, we meet uh, every two me two weeks, but not every two weeks, but uh, often we have an uh, expert 
uh, to um, uh, inform us about certain things. Um, lat last working group, I believe, I believe it was last working group, um, the town conservation director, um, Dave Zomack, um, gave us a lot of good information and map maps and so forth of the um, conservation land and and I should say that the history of conservation in Amherst uh, and how much um, effort uh, an unusual effort in Amherst has taken place with regard to conservation um, uh, over the over the years uh, to the extent that there's a lot even even beyond what the GZA map um, showed uh, there's even additional lands that are you know technically off limits because they're conserved conserved uh, 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 by by the town uh, or by agreements, uh, state agreements of, of chapter uh, chapter sixty one a, I believe it was, and so forth, or not not chapter sixty one a, but the um, uh, various different programs that the, that the state has with regard to uh, uh, keeping some lands not um, from development in perpetuity, um, and so that's also taking into to account. We we sort of recognizing that the um, uh, remaining parcels or, or areas of Amherst uh, for solar development um, uh, are starting to look relatively relatively limited not not strictly limited but it's not um, much of the much of the town is is kind of not feasible for various different reasons for solar development so that's something else that we're you know talking about and and, and considering as we uh, as we move forward with uh, with the discussions on on the zoning zoning itself. Um, so I guess that's what I can um, report. Uh, we meet every two weeks on the same weeks as the uh, as ECAC. Um, and so people are in the middle of the day, 1130 to 130 generally. So people are, are uh, um, invited to uh, to attend as well. Um, um, and I, I know some of you do. Um, what, what day did you say, Steve? Or Dwayne? Uh, sorry, sorry, Fridays. Fridays from uh, yeah. 1130 to 130. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes there's a uh, aberration to that, but that's generally the time. Um, uh, but they're posted as well. Um, so happy to answer questions or, or uh, take some input from anybody um, as we move forward on that. Uh, but then also open to um, uh, if we want to have a discussion or just or table it for the uh, larger group when we get back together on anything else we should be doing on solar um, in the meantime. Are there any questions for Dwayne to kind of lead off? I had one that came to mind. Uh, um, I'm assuming at some point the whole proposal will be submitted for legal review. Will that be before your group brings it to the town manager or will that be after the town manager receives it do you do you know that yet um i don't but i saw stephanie uh uh, uh going this way yeah actually uh, so, she go ahead. Ahead. so go ahead <laughs> i think once yeah i i think it'll probably happen fairly simultaneously once the final draft is done then it goes to the legal counsel for review, like the town, basically the town manager gets it and the town manager, it will be sent to legal counsel. Um, and then it'll likely go to, likely go to CRC. Um, so there'll be other stages, you know, this is really the initial draft is what this group is putting together, the initial draft. It's not the final and I, I will say that um, my my sense is that, and Stephanie can opine here as well. But is that as we're deliberating as a working group, if we have a, if we're trying to make some sort of decision or understand something that um, is sort of on the precipice of whether it's legal, uh, likely to pass legal muster, um, we may have the opportunity to just bounce a, a specific question off the legal um, uh, external uh, legal counsel. And, and Dwayne, you mentioned that um, you started out with the easy issues and working perhaps towards the more, um, I think you said, interesting ones. Um, what are some of the more interesting ones that are coming at the group to grapple with? Um, I think it may be hard to say, but um, some of them that I think have, have uh, 
been raised so far is, for example, um, should there be a cap on the size of any any particular project um, or, or or by by megawatt or by acreage? Um, um, I think that's that's one. Um, I think the, the whole issue of of um, of um, you know is there's is there language to be had with regard to um, uh, land clearing? Um, uh, and 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 uh, uh, and whether there's any anything that zoning would say about that or should say about that, um, I think th those are those are kind of some of the key issues that you know we're all kind of aware of that are at the crux of a lot of different perspectives. Um, there, there's the issue of. Um, you know, I, I think that the issue of what of um, uh, citing solar and 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 batteries uh, near water supply, uh, I think part of that is pretty clear on the GZA map because you know those sort of watersheds are well defined and sort of off limits anyhow. But then there's the the well the wells um, of uh, 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 the, the, of um, uh, residences and, and perhaps businesses that are dependent on wells and whether there's anything that zoning says about that. Um, I think the, the, you know, the zoning will need to say something about, um, um, setbacks, um, from property lines, for example. Um, and, um, uh, so that, that'll be a discussion, um, and so forth. But, you know, those, those, I think, you know, some of this we're drawing from, what sort of precedent in zoning anyhow for other things. Um, uh, uh, others will have to um, sort of deliberate on. Good, good, interesting issues to have conversations about. I just want to add to that about yeah. agricultural land was also another yeah, absolutely. prime topic of discussion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Was, was GZA mapping out Agricultural soils was that part of their task? Well, they identified, um, yeah, they they did map out um, and identify, I think, land use. So they had sort of the general mapping, and then they had categories for land use. So um, I think you know those that were under APRs are, you know, identified as restricted. So you know they've they've gone through anything that can't be developed is in black, is blacked out. So when you look at that map, anything else, um, and it could potentially include agricultural land as well. And there's, you know, there'll be layers that you can turn on and off. The map isn't done yet. Um, the base map is done. It now has to go to the town and our GIS expert is going to turn on and off the other, you know, layers so that when somebody goes to the site and uses this map, they'll be able to see you know, other information. And even, even APR land, I think, um, if I recall co correctly, and we'll have to double check on this, there, there, there's not a complete prohibition on solar, um, right. but it needs to be um, uh, uh, set aside on, on, on more of the marginal areas um, and also no more than two times the, the energy use on site. Um, so it's, it's unlikely to have be, um, have the opportunity for large scale development on those on those sites, uh, but still, um, I don't think we would absolutely. I don't think. I mean, it's up to it's up to our working group. But my sense is we would um, abide by sort of those state rules around solar development on APR land. And you'd have to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. We were, we, you know, we we had the Riot Act. Read to us by the external council with regard to you know you can't arbitrarily zone against solar um, unless um, you know uh, you can demonstrate uh, welfare uh, you know uh, the, the need to protect uh, well, social welfare um, public health and safety um, and so um, that's where um, there's a lot of there will be some discussion to be had in terms of uh, what those things mean. Uh, and whether there's sufficient, and, and there's been lawsuits that have upheld that very strictly. Uh, and um, so, 
um, I think a, a lot of this discussion was with regard to defining uh, to the extent that we want to define and articulate um, values in Amherst that have been expressed um, that might suggest some impacts um, that solar might have on public welfare, for example. Um, And any other question for Dwayne's update on solar? And Dwayne, you asked if people might have here might have other ideas or topics on solar. Did did you have anything in mind that we might want to put on a future agenda for ECAC discussion? Um, <laughs> I'll be frank with you. I haven't had time to think about okay. it. <laughs> um, uh, that being said, I feel like, um, you know, solar is one of our topics and, and, uh, um, I feel like, you know, we did, we did, uh, and I took sort of the lead on with others, but on the, on the, um, assessment we did on, on sort of our fair share, um, and that's done, uh, if there's something else, um, that would be helpful, we can look at that. So, um, I didn't come with any ideas and, um, it sort of just dawned on me that, um, you know, obviously, I'm involved with e uh, with uh, the bylaw working group, but uh, if I'm leading sort of the solar group in ECAC, um, then um, uh, unless the, the work on the solar bylaw takes that, but uh, 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 but I'm happy to you know work with others um, to see what else if there's anything else we could do um, that doesn't need to wait for the for the zoning bylaw to really. Um, Get get settled out. That would be helpful uh, for for this group. But yeah, maybe we can put that on another. Maybe the next time I'm up for a status update, um, we can uh, have a discussion about that. Okay. I have a question. Um, I'm looking to see if I can find it. Um, there's a bill. I think it might even be a Sapodosa and Comerford uh, bill on solar siting that's um, putting a, I think a cap on size of solar that can be in forested areas. It would be good to at least know about that and perhaps that would give a guideline if the um, bylaw committee wants to consider mm -hmm. that. Um, I'll try to find it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Yeah, if you find that, let us know under that. I'd be interested. Andrew, if you send that to me, I can forward it to the working group as part of their meeting yeah, packet. That'd be, that'd be great. Okay. And it, Stephanie, when the map becomes available, will we have a chance for G GZA come into one of our meetings to give us a preview of that, or we just no. will find it online? I'll I'll, make, I'll send you all the link to okay. it when it's av available, but can... GZA is, they'll do a final um, presentation with their final report, but they won't be specifically doing anything about the map. Okay. They're kind of done with that piece, honestly. That's, they're moving on now. And do you have anything to report? They think they finished their couple of presentations in town. Do you know how those went? Sure, yeah. I was gonna do this as my step update, but I can do oh, it okay. now. Um, just because the, so the, um, so the, all of the three events were completed. We had about 21 people attend the virtual meeting. We had roughly 25 people show up for the two events um, at the Jones Library uh, that were in the Woodbury room. Um, they put together a really nice sort of display and it was great because people could just sort of come and participate as much or as little as they wanted. But I think we got some good feedback. I will say that at this point, the surveys, the survey responses end at, uh, on Friday this week on the 31st. That's the last day for people to uh, respond to the surveys. If you all haven't done it, and it's funny because I feel like the people that haven't done it yet are all a lot of the people that are involved in a lot of this. Um, so uh, including here in town hall too, people have said, oh, I've been meaning to do that. So <laughs> my reminder is everyone needs to do the survey, but we have over 500 responses. Wow. So um, we've had a pretty robust, yes, 
I, I still have my card. Your, your glossy postcard. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it would be great if people could respond. But yes, we do already. And my guess is, I that was as of maybe the beginning of the week that we had 500 or so. So it's probably even more now. Oh. So we've had a really good response rate, and it's hopefully it will be even more. Um, but as we said, they're done with the assessment. Now they will take that community feedback. They also will get the responses off of Engage Amherst. Um, and any sort of written comment that was sort of outside of the survey, all of that will be compiled um, and be part of the report as kind of like an appendix. We'll have all of the, um, the sort of more written responses that were outside of the survey. Great, that sounds good. Any other um, questions on the solar updates before we go on to the next item? Okay, it looks like our next item is to discuss the gas pipeline. Okay, um, so uh, I can present for um, Laurie um, and it's, sort of ideas <laughs> it's it's not something we're ready to um actually promote but what i need to do stephanie is to log in on my computer so that i can share my screen um or send you the link for you to share so which Sorry, I was muted. I was saying just you can email it to me. I'm just going to open up my email and you can send it. All right. Um, just going to take a minute. Yeah, especially if mine won't share. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> we might have to do it the other way. So I'm going to log in. No, mm, not yet. Okay, here. Oops. Okay, so I'll get it up and share my screen. So um, what Laurie wrote was what I consider um, mostly the background. Um, and the idea just to remind people was to um, ask the town council to resolve that um, Amherst um, would support the, the ask that the governor declare a halt to expanding the gas system. Um, and so I think what we would want to send would be a packet with information um, and I'll just show you that um, there's a number of resources that uh, Laurie collected. Um, and, um, and then I think we might write a sample resolution, um, but I'm not sure about that. Um, so what do people think about just the how to proceed in, in that. So the general idea is to ask the Amherst Town Council to vote in favor of opposing this pipeline development or something along those lines? Yeah, I think it would be, you know, to uh, 
whatever the right words are, send you know a letter to the administration um, saying and our legislators or who whoever we we identify um, to express support for this. There, there are there are a lot of models of, the, of resolutions we could just copy. Um, so some of this would be in whereases, and some would just be background information. That's how I think of it. Um, so. I see the bottom there, the suggestion, we suggest instead the funds be put towards mini splits. Is, is, is that a coordinated effort or is that something that you and Lori came up with? <laughs> I'm not sure where that came up. Okay. Came from. <laughs> um, and uh, and who, who's, um, what money are we talking about? This isn't asking for money. No, but in, instead of putting in the pipeline, um, putting in oh, oh, uh, whose money yeah. is that? Ever sources. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's ours. It's the taxpayers who will, um, who foot the bill in um, the form of rate hikes. Well, that would be one question I have: <laughs> is who's at risk for this investment uh, of this of this uh, pipeline? Yeah. You know, I don't think it's a localized tax burden or rate burden, but I'm not sure about that. I, I think that it's just, you know, the, the whole, you, you know, how the, the rate structure goes, um, the, the gas, come, you know, utilities have their divisions. And so improvements that they, into the um yeah but there is there is um, that division it, it i think the rates differ by by region yeah but it's not it's not necessarily the case that the utility and i'm not saying it is or it isn't but it's not necessarily the case that the the utility can rate base the investment cost their investment cost of that infrastructure and, and be guaranteed to get it paid back to them reg regardless of how much gas they actually sell. And I guess that's, um, you know, I, I, I would have a much more serious concern about it if, if they, if, if Eversource was guaranteed through um, to recover the, their investment cost yeah. Uh, yeah. through rates. My understanding is that that is the guarantee. That's um, one of the motivations to doing these upgrades um, because they obviously would, they can't make a profit on the product that they sell and make a profit on the um, maintenance and growth of the system. But I would like to have that confirmed too. Yeah. Comments or thoughts from other members? I mean, another thing maybe to, again, if I was a town council and trying to figure out um, whether to resolve to um, voice an opinion to the state government um, against this or not, I'd, I'd be curious to know what the government of Longmeadow thinks. Um, oh, yeah, no, all of the, the, the government of Longmeadow, all of the legislators in the area are strongly against it. And the, the state legislators or the town State. Yes, both, both. I, I think that should be 
referenced and cited in some way in a letter. That's good. Yeah, I agree. I think that's that's important if we're asking the Amherst Council to join with the yeah. city council of those of Longmeadow or this area affected, that's more powerful. Um, I'd also suggest that bit about redirecting the money. That seems a little vague. So maybe that's not part of the ask. It's maybe the ask is focused on um, a resolution against that gas pipeline expansion. But I think that, my opinion, that should be made pretty clear at the beginning of the letter what you are asking the town council to do. And then you can drop back into that background and the, and the descriptions that you have there, but the ask should be quite clear at the outset. Yeah. Um, Laura, you have a question or comment? Yeah, I just agree um, with Dwayne's point about noting what the other, the other groups and politicians on the local and state level that are against this. Um, I don't think we necessarily have to take out the cost thing, but we could say like the money could be used better elsewhere, for example, in this way, right? Um, so I think we can just give those suggestions, but we don't have to, you know, stay it, state it quite so um, resolutely, I guess. Yeah, and I, I'm not that's super that's comfortable that's with the specificity of heat pumps. <laughs> I, I think at, like, delivering energy in, the, in a less carbon intensive way or something. I, I, I generalize that I think would be more appropriate. Yeah. All right, does that give you some good feedback, Andra, that you can talk with Lori about and come back at a future meeting with a revised letter? Yeah. Great. So I think you're up next as well, um, Andra. So. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't um, make any progress on it. So um, I, I was going to write a draft of um, a letter to the governor or the DPU. Congratulations on wonderful new um commission and uh since you're going to make climate so important here's some suggestions ah, okay. and uh, uh one of the you know obviously one of the things that motivated this was the long line to get through the dpu um for a municipal aggregation application but um the, it, it's it's so much work. Stephanie and I were talking about it, and you know it's like three hundred pages of, of just screenshots of posted meetings, and you know it's like so much. And there are six week limits in other states to review this. Clearly, they do not have to provide that level of um, scrutiny in reviewing applications if they can turn it around that fast. So, um, you know, we might not get into the weeds that much in this letter, but it, it, it makes it so much harder for a community like ours trying to do something that's not just standard um you know the the consultants put in the same exact thing for every town um for the most part we're asking for more and more different and that just makes it a huge lift for the staff so it really shouldn't be this hard okay well it sounds like i i look forward then to seeing when you have the time your draft letter that we can uh, okay. discuss and review and vote on in the future. Okay. It won't be at the next meeting. Okay. 
right and then then um yeah if when when you have a sense of when it might be coming forward that would be good to let stephanie and vasu know so we're putting it on future agendas okay moving on the agenda then the next item is heat pump panel planning heat pump panel planning who's who's in charge of that sounds like jesse is that you jesse oh laura Oh, there you go. Oh, you're muted. Oh, your microphone's not working. Can't hear you. <laughs> I I thought that was Lori, and um, I don't think she's here. Oh, okay. Right, Lori was working on that. And I couldn't tell if Laura was just simply trying to tell us that or if she had more to say. But it looks like she has logged out. Is she trying to jump back in, Stephanie? Do you see her in the waiting room or anything? Ah, she's reappeared. Potentially. We can see your name, Laura, but we're not hearing you yet. Oh, now we've disappeared again. Stephanie, do you recall, was that a Lori item? You are muted, Stephanie. It happened at least once or twice. Um, Lori definitely was leading that, I believe. Um, and I thought Laura was maybe had some thoughts on that too, but um, looks like she's trying to get on. Hey, Laura, I think we might be able to hear you if you say something. And Stephanie, your voice came in really soft just then. Okay. That would be why. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're having quite a night. Um, but did you hear what I said, that it was Lori? And yes. I think L Laura is contributing. Hi, Laura. We can see Hi. you. Yeah. I am back. I don't know what happened. Anyway, sorry. I couldn't hear most of the rest of the last five minutes, but I'm back. <laughs> um, we were just, the next item on the agenda is the heat pump panel planning. And I was asking if there was anybody here that was doing that or if that's a Lori item. And that's where I saw your hand go up. So I wasn't sure if you were jumping in on that item. Um, that's funny if I just like accidentally volunteered myself. No, I was putting my hand up to say that I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> and could you hear me? Um, I don't, I have not gotten involved in helping to plan that. I do believe I, I said I would participate on the panel. That's all the information I have. Okay. Yeah, I think it was primarily Lori. Okay. Well, let's push that one to the next uh, meeting then when Lori can attend. Okay. And that brings us to staff updates. So my first big update is that unless the state legislature makes it official that we can extend the remote meetings, it expires on Friday. I have not, I won't, I won't sort of be able to um, maintain our remote meetings until I actually get notified by the town manager's office. So when I, it becomes official for me when I hear it from the town manager's office. So um, that means that our next meeting will uh, at least right now tentatively be, or actually will be in person. Um, I will send you the information um, I have to, I had been reserving rooms and I had had it on the calendar for the longest time, even through COVID, but I'm not sure if I still have those reservations maintained. So I'll have to, I'll get the information to you as soon as I know um, which room we'll be in. It will be in town hall though, I believe. 
So, um, and that will be two weeks from now. I think that's, is it the, is it the 12th? Sorry, I don't well, know my sounds calendar about right, right. me. Yeah. Yep. Because I was thinking about the solar bottle hour working group too, it'll affect them as well. So, um, yep. So next meeting is in person. Do you know if the legislature is trying to renew it? So what happened is that both the House and the Senate have extended remote meetings. However, their language differs. And apparently there needs to be some reconciling of the language before it can be official. And that's where I think things are being held up a bit. I, I don't I haven't had a more recent update, but that was my understanding. So I, you know, it's frustrating because, especially for us, because we're all scrambling to make sure that we have rooms reserved and that people are aware ahead of time. Um, you know, it affects people, um, especially those with children or jobs or who can't necessarily get, you know, get here. Um, so it's frustrating that this is the second time uh, that we've run into this happening at the 11th hour. Where and if you recall, we did have one remote meeting the last time it was it was expired, and then they extended it, and now we're at this point again. And you would hope that they would have gotten it together a lot sooner than this, instead of having us all scramble. So um, that's you know, I, my understanding is the intent is certainly to extend it. Okay. I think what we've seen is that we get more. Um, we get more representation on committees, we get more public participation. So there's a lot of reasons why, as much as we'd like being in person, it really has worked um, for us to be meeting remotely. Um, and from my perspective, less carbon intensive, people aren't driving their cars to get here and we're not running, the buildings are operating uh, less because we're not having night meetings or as frequent night meetings. Um, staff sometimes stays here later, like I'm here later, but I'm one of the last people, you know, who ends up leaving. And so, you know, we have a lot less um, energy use intensity by meeting remotely. So, um, you know, that's that's my sort of promotion for for <laughs> why we should continue. It's just like, it's so much less carbon intensive. Okay, well, we will um, pay attention to your announcements as we plan our life for around April, May, April, April 12th, to see whether we have to drive in our cars or hop on our bikes or whether we can stay home. <laughs> Thank you. I, I will say, though, that um, because I know this is always an issue for, for Stella in particular has brought it up, um, that she has challenges with being in person. Um, because of childcare issues. And so um, you can have a few, you have to have a quorum in person, no. mm -hmm. but you can have a few members attend remotely. We just have to make sure that we're in a room that has a hybrid setup so that we can, and not all rooms in town hall can accommodate that. So there's, you know, people are vying for the room that has the ability to do so. Um, so, one or two members would be able to, or three members would be able to meet um, remotely, but it will need the chair to approve that participation. Um, you'd have to make, fill out a form, there's a form to request, which I will send it to you all again, but you'll have to complete the form to request remote participation. The chair needs to sign it, and then it goes to the town clerk's office. So it's not as sort of straightforward as just showing up. And the chair has to be in person. The chair is actually required to be in person. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have other updates, Stephanie? Other staff updates? Um, just there's so much is sort of um, coming together right now. <laughs> so it's been a crazy time. A lot of contracts being sent out and signed and approved. Um, We've got a contract uh, now being signed for the community dashboard, which will be on the town's website. Um, again, something that was in our CARP. Um, we have now secured two fellows. Um, they're fantastic. I'm really excited about working with these two. Um, uh, 
Miguel is going to be doing, and I'm sorry, I'm blanking on their last names at this moment, but um, Miguel will be working on the building inventory uh, and he'll be working with our facilities director um, as well as myself. And then we have a woman named Caitlin who's gonna be doing a greenhouse gas emissions inventory and mm -hmm. they will be here in June and they'll be here through August. They will have some time that they'll be off for vacation time, but, um, and they will primarily be, I think, mostly located here, but, you know, at some point they'll be able to do some remote work. Um, you know, at some point where they're really just crunching numbers and doing the data stuff, we'll, you know, I, they've asked if they could be hybrid and I didn't see a problem with that. So, but we will have them here with us for a bit. So we're working on securing spaces for them here. Um, really excited. They're, the caliber of people that come through this program is really impressive. Um, so I'm really excited uh, to have them both here. Um, what else? Let's see. So the dashboard, that piece, um, I feel like I signed another contract too. <laughs> the, um, the effort with the rental survey is moving forward. Um, so I've met with um, the folks, family outreach is basically overseeing that that project and I'm checking in with them to make sure it's moving forward. Again, we've got this um, project was funded through the Mass CEC Clean Energy Center. It's an Empower grant. And so um, they are meeting, uh, they are meeting pretty regularly. It's been a bit of a slow process to get up and running. They've drafted a survey. Um, they're kind of, you know, doing the survey and then I sort of gave them some feedback. Um, so it's come to me, but it's basically still sitting with them. I haven't seen the more recent update. Um, I think they're trying to schedule their community meeting. They're trying to figure out when they're going to be um, going around to the different apartment complexes to sort of post flyers. Um, they're going to be having people that go through family outreach for services. They're going to give them the survey to see if people will sign it. They'll be given an incentive in a, in a five dollar gift card. So. You know, the program is kind of flushed out. It's just a matter of like the next steps getting each step has to be sort of very carefully reviewed and gone over before we move to that next phase. So um, all should be said and done um, by uh, the end of October. So by then we should be like completed with the survey and getting the information. And again, this is just for renters specifically to sort of, you know, sort of gauge where they are on if there was some kind of building efficiency rating system, would that help influence them? Do they feel there's a need? Uh, would they welcome that? How do they feel about, you know, um, things like heat pump technology or retrofits happening at their buildings? There's definitely been the concern that I've heard and we've all ex heard expressed before. People are really worried about if these kind of technologies are implemented that it will reflect in the cost in their rent, um, you know, so just sort of getting their in, their feedback and not to sort of have any response to that, just to find out what it is people are concerned with. So um, we'll have something by the, you know, by the mid fall, I would think. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, is there any way we could review it before it's the survey's finalized? Because we're the ones who are going to be using this data. And if we don't have input into the way the questions are structured, we won't be able to answer our questions. Yeah, I think part of this was also um, in, like this was very much, we were explaining to people what we were doing. And so that's why I've been working with them, but really we're, this is really sort of being led by these community captains. And so I'm sort of, I've been guiding some of the questions and I can share it with you, but I, I think it's, you know, it's taken them so long to sort of get to this point where mm -hmm. we have something drafted. I've given my feedback based on what we're doing. Um, I think I have a pretty good handle on it. So I, I don't know that it has to go through committee review on top of all of that. I just think we're okay. needing to move them forward well, at this just, point. Well, just, you know, surveys are tricky. Wording really matters. Um, you can get an, 
one response if you word it one way and another if you word it another way. And so things like, you know, if this upgrading the energy system or insulation could be done without disruption, you know, or with, with less than a week or less than two days, you know, it, it's, you get more nuance, right. right? Right. Instead of, you know, just not knowing if they're imagining a whole summer of people coming in and out of their house. And so they're against it. Yeah. I haven't received the, um, the latest version yet. So I would be happy if you want to sort of me to send it to you and you want to give me some feedback, but I, I really don't want to have it be this big discussion because I really feel like it also takes away empowering people to do this. Yep. So I really want to let, I mean, that was the whole point of it. So yep. I don't want to take that away. I feel like yep. that was, you know. These... Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so. I, I'm with you on that. Um, but also it's, I don't know if if there were are there going to be materials for um, educating people, letting people know what you know. I don't know. Just we haven't gotten there yet. Like it's very <laughs> slow moving, um, I get and that, it's been hard. It's, yeah, no, I hear you, and I yes, I mean, I we're just like I said, we're getting through the just the survey <laughs> getting that developed at this point like we're trying yeah. to get that forward that'll be like a next step and i don't even want to get ahead of it yet because when i have met and start talking about things it's people just get really overwhelmed and it's a lot because it's a lot it's all new a lot of this is very new information i mean we all it's easy to have these conversations in our group because we all know what we're you know we know the subject matter but introducing it for the first time to people, it's like trying to keep mm -hmm. it as basic and simple as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not, they don't, you know, people don't need all of the, you know, sort of academics of, you no. know, heat pump technology and all that. And no, they no. just need the sort of, you know, we're trying to just get people to understand the basics of, and put it in well, terms that are, you know, that people can understand. Also, everything is being translated. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want to lose things, if you will, in translation as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but I, I was thinking more like, you know, here's this um, street in New York that was completely upgraded all in a week. And here, you know, show a picture. <laughs> yeah, that kind of really concrete stuff. It's funny because I don't think that's been people like of all the questions that people sort of generated, disruption was not a big one <laughs> at all. I really the biggest concern is just financial for people. That was one of the biggest concerns. Yeah. I, I haven't looked at the questions for a little bit. So um I, you know, off the top of my head, I can't tell you the focus of of, of all of them, but um they were sort of more about like, you know, what what are people are people you know, what are people's um, knowledge level about, mm -hmm. about this? A little, a lot, none at all? Like, you know, those were yeah. some of the questions and they were, all the questions were multiple choice answers that were very sort of straightforward. Great. Mm -hmm. And will they be able to identify people who are interested in learning more or getting more involved? that was another I, one of yeah I think we hopes, could, right yeah I mean I think maybe when they do some of the more direct outreach because they're going to be doing some outreach at the complexes themselves um, I think they'd be able to um, gauge more of that than just through the surveys you know Great. I mean I think we'll be happy if people complete the surveys there there is an incentive tied to it so you know that's part of the the hope that people will do them because there's an incentive and then maybe we can find out but um given the challenge of getting people to you know to do this piece um you know has i, yeah. I you know getting people engaged i think Fine. is not yeah. easy <laughs> 
is hard. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I, I I agree that it's the empower grant. Let's leave them with the power and not not meddle too much. Um, I think did I announce last meeting that the town um, CRC removed the energy efficiency language from the draft rental registration bylaw. I know I've talked about it once or twice, but from what I've understood, they've removed the language that we had recommended. They voted to strike that following, I think, concerns from uh, building owners about increasing costs that would be passed on to the tenants. Um, so that is no longer in the language. It was also a little bit peripheral and some people had raised questions whether the original, whether that sort of thing was authorized under the rental registration. So that's a little bit, well, a little bit, that's a fair bit disappointing. Um, we put a fair bit of effort and time into that, but I think we can step back and regroup and think about how we want to continue sort of trying to say, how can we work on this issue of um, energy use in rental buildings where the tenants don't have so much direct control over that. And how can we do that in a way that benefits them the most? Yeah, Stephanie. Um, yeah, I think in some ways it it got very, I feel like that piece of it got lost because the rental registration bylaw, the updates to it are, there's so much, it's been expanded so broadly. And so that energy efficiency piece was, it was great to have in there to get it in there, but it, I just, it just seemed like it was just lost with everything else and it didn't elevate it to the, um, I would say the um, visibility that that particular topic should have. So in some ways, you know, it gets back to the discussions that have been had around creating some kind of, you know, um, building efficiency rating system. And, you know, I know just, you know, in looking, you know, even in other countries and, you know, a rating codes come up for, you know, housing and rental apartments and, you know, and they just, and these are, you know, some places overseas. And I feel like if, if that's happening, it, it could happen here too. And it does in some states. So why can't we have something that just makes it easier for people to identify the energy efficiency, not just of rental units, but broadly, you know, all buildings, like there should be some kind of a way to, to report out. So um, I just, I know that there's been other communities and that was part of the group that I was participating in through NEEP was, you know, looking at, can the state sort of move towards, can we recommend that the state move towards creating something? Um, or if there's the effort that's underway, can we support that? It's been tried in every single session. Governor Baker put in his own bill to try to pass it, and the real estate industry shoots it down every time. Every building in New York City that has any work being done on it, if you get up to get a building permit, you get this done. It gets posted right on the window. Yep. There's A's, there's B's, there's C's. I didn't see any D's. I think if the you know, if the Realty Association is pushing back hard, then everybody else has to push back harder. Yes. You know, it's just, okay. it seems like there's a, you know, there's definitely a desire for it, not just here. A lot of other communities really want this. There is a provision in the law that was passed this past summer, the Act Driving Solar and Wind Development, that all large buildings will have to report actual energy use. And the agency in charge of that, they have a year or two to develop the, the regulations around that. Uh, I believe at the moment, it's large building is defined as 200,000 square feet or larger, I think. Um, and it will be reported, the general idea I believe is it would be reported through uh, the EPA um, energy portfolio platform. And it would also require the utility companies to report 
the energy use for those properties. So both the electric and the gas utilities would have to report. So having the utilities report takes a bit of a burden off the building owner to collect all that data. Um, that might make it a little bit more palatable. It's not clear to me, at least, I haven't, I couldn't find a very, there's very little information about it and how it's developing. You know, whether that 200,000 square feet could apply to one of the larger comp apartment complexes in Amherst, you know, if they're adding up all of the living space, some of those apartments could fall um, over that threshold. If it's just a footprint size or if it's a per building things, then maybe not. But anyways, that's coming down probably in a year or two um, at the state level. So I think that will make people more aware of it. And then hopefully they'll realize it's not so horrible and they'll be more amenable to some of these other approaches, which are the building rating systems, which again are not direct energy use, but more a function of the building's insulation and envelope and structure. So that's coming along the way. Laura, and then Jesse. Yeah, thanks for that update, Steve. Um, yeah, that is disappointing. And I think it, but I like your approach, your positive attitude to re regroup and reframe. I think the takeaway for me and Stephanie, I think you're right. Like we could potentially end up with something more direct and be and better suited to our needs, but it sounds like we're going to have to push against local property owners in town. Um, I had a conversation with the parent that owns property at a sporting event this winter who immediately jumped down my throat about how it's going to cost more money and what about affordable housing and blah, 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 blah. So like, you know, I think it's an uphill battle there. So I think this, the PACE event could, is one opportunity, um, but I do think trying to figure out how to talk to and get information out to as many building owners and homeowners as possible, multiple homeowners as possible, see if we can get a few folks on our side will be beneficial. Uh, Jesse, you had a comment then, Stephanie? Yeah, unless Stephanie is a direct response to Laura's. Uh, it, it was actually, I was just going to say, I think like anything else, getting people who are in the industry, like other property owners who have implemented this successfully as, you know, providing example is always the best way to sort of educate everybody, including the existing um, property owners. I know nothing about that building on Spring Street, but I did notice it has solar on it the other day that's been the, the one that's being built so and the one where am i over there is uh is going to be passive house uh, next to the amherst college field there and it's actually been a great i don't know if you drive down route nine regularly but it is a great kind of lesson in envelope design and what like a simple attainable air sealed building and good window installation it's it, that building should perform very well. It's like a, the, the surface to volume ratio. It's it, it it's been fun watching that go up as compared to some of the more complex and poorly built buildings I've seen go up. Um, another possible opportunity of this sort of information gathering is you know as part of the new building code renovations now will have be required to to have energy modeling and HERS rating and various things done. And all of that, I think may be public information as part of a building permit, which is public information. Um, and so while it doesn't cover all the existing buildings, there could be ways to certainly work with that data set to just make that, you know, make that information public. One of the ideas that we've always kicked around is like just post your HERS rating on the on the inside um, of your electrical panel. And then someone who is potentially buying a house or renting a house can see that, and, you know, it exists. It's a number we could all get used to. It's easy to gut check on this is good, this is bad, like miles per gallon, et cetera. And then if we are 
are we in to ECM AC member updates right now? Is that what this conversation is? I think so. Stephanie, did you finish with your staff updates? I guess I, I guess I led the way into ECAC member updates with my update a moment ago. So if you have an update, Jesse, go ahead. Just a quick one. Yeah, great segue. Um, the uh, I was at the Nessie Building Energy Conference yesterday, and I saw Lori Goldner there um, absorbing the sort of fire hose of information that comes out of that. So and I just want to say it was inspiring. I don't know if anyone else was there or went online and caught the keynote. The keynote, the, the, the theme of the conference this year was scalability. And in particular, talking about bringing into the building code and having that happen across the state at a, at a real scalable level. And, and it, you know, Lisa, I think Lisa Cunningham and Jake Fukup Knowles, who Andre, I'm sure you've worked with Lisa before. <clears throat> it was good. It was, and I just, a lot of inspiring conversations and, and concrete work there. So I think, we may ask Lori to, and I, maybe we can report back on some particularly relevant stuff, but more so than other years, very relevant to the work this group is doing. Uh, and I'll be at the Better Buildings by Design Conference next week in Vermont, which is similar, but less Massachusetts based. Um, but I think the mess, the takeaway is we are not alone. There are people doing this work actively and aggressively all over the state and having excellent successes and life and and turning failures into successes as well like this like you we talked about with the efficiency language and how can we do it better so um just a great great conference and sorry i wasn't able to go there again today but i think very relevant to the work we're doing Right, thank you. Uh, Andra? Yeah, I'm going to be reporting to the Building Electrification Accelerator group. Um, you know, and, and, you know, one of the things I'll report is the um, disappointment that our energy efficiency um, uh, wording, whatever language you didn't get into the bylaw. Um, and just so people know, that was the result of like nine months or a year of our learning and, you know, going to monthly seminars and just, you know, getting um, a lot of information about building electrification and choosing our project. And this was it. And it went to the town committee and died there. Um, so what's the lesson learned? More education was needed, perhaps. Um, you know, I, I, I and that's one of the things that that they want people to share. So your suggestions are welcome. Yes, Stephanie. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to say was that I think there was um, there was concern from staff as well about the amount of work that that was going to add to what they were already having to do with their checklists for efficiency. Um, and and I did share that in the beginning when we had talked about it. So I think it's not that. And it's not that people were opposed to it. I think they just felt like that wasn't the appropriate place for it. Um, so again, I don't, I don't think it was a sort of very negative um, overall negativity internally about something like this. And in fact, when I heard, when I found out that that was what had happened, and I reported back to Steve, I think I also shared with Steve that my response was, well, and I hope we'll be open-minded about some kind of uh, an efficiency bylaw being moved ahead. So, um, you know, to say that we got that close means that there was certainly some interest for having some kind of a rating system, right? So I think, you know, I, I just think it just, it wasn't really the, it wasn't totally the right place for it. So keeping all of that and all that work is for not, is not for not, 
it's, you know, it can be utilized in sort of a next, you know, a, a next approach. Right. Yeah. Good learning experience. And we'll keep pushing and we'll keep educating. I think this, this around help educate at least the town council members on the CRC. They learned more about the need and the methods for uh, rental building energy efficiency improvements. Are there other ECAC member updates? Laura. Just a quick, uh, yeah, just a quick update for me that I did submit our letter to the Gazette yesterday. I haven't heard back from them yet. Um, I will probably submit it as well to the Indy. Um, but thank you all for your feedback and thanks, Jesse, for your co-authorship on that. I think it turned out really well. So um looking forward to getting that published. Great. Well, look, looking forward to seeing it in newsprint. <laughs> yeah, and great. And Laura, thanks for spearheading it. I, I just want to say that I think ideally we're regulars, like each once, you know, maybe once a quarter or something. Like, and we, you know, it would be great if our voice got to be known in, in that way. So I'm yeah, Jesse, to, um, as yeah. you were just talking earlier about the building on Route 9, I was thinking, Man, it'd be great for Jesse to write a letter to the paper about that because normal people, I don't say that negatively, but that don't know about envelopes are not, wouldn't have had that same experience going by the building, but I think, and it, and it looks great. Like it's a beautiful building. So um, that's all I can see from it. But um, anyway, yeah, I totally agree. I think that's something we should think about. Okay, if there's no other updates, uh, items for next meeting agenda. I'm sorry, I'm gonna need to go to another meeting. Okay, thank I'd you. Like we have a couple of items that Andra will be bringing forward. That would be the updated gas pipeline letter and discussion on that. And then if, if she has the time for a future meeting, then the um, letter to the new DPU commissioner. Um, oh, Stephanie, we did not talk today about the sustainability festival planning. Is there anything that we need to discuss at this I think point? Not for you all. Laurie has been focused on you all. I mean, I'm just, I'm sort of doing the whole big, yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. picture. So, um, lots going on, but I will say that I, um, I've heard from Amherst college. We have support for vendor parking, only vendors, in two of their lots. Um, usually we just get one, but it's sort of an as we can get space kind of thing. So I'm not sure how that's gonna, you know, it's in the past we've sort of had quote unquote reserved space, but I think it'll work out. I think it'll be fine. And I guess we'll wait at our next meeting, Lori can report about uh, staffing, ECA member staffing at, at the booth, whether she's found a, um, a tent, those sort of things that we talked about at the last meeting. We'll have time to revisit those at our next meeting, which is before the festival. Yep. Okay. So that'll be a next meeting agenda. We'll be reviewing our plans for the sustainability festival. Other items that people can think of to put on the list for the future meetings? Okay. I mean, well, I think um, we could continue this discussion about. I don't know if we need to do it next time, necessarily, but the discussion we were just having about the energy efficiency rating and what our next steps should be there. Yeah, that's a good one for 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 me. It might be a, a month or so from now, after the end of this semester, I'll be able to re-engage in that and um, plan a new new um, activity in that area. Yeah, that sounds good. So maybe we can just put it on the, in the meeting minutes as something to pick back up. Right. In the future. Okay. Well, I guess we're at the, nearly at the end of the meeting. Um, 
any if there's no other items for next meeting agenda at the moment, then we can go to public comment. So any members of the public that would like to make a comment, please electronically raise your hand and Stephanie will bring you into the meeting. So Martha, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, everyone. It's Martha Hanner I'm in District 5. I just wanted to remark on the uh, subject of the gas pipeline. I mean, we know we all, of course, are you know, eager to decrease and then get rid of fossil fuels. But I know there's a concern at the present time about the deterioration of existing gas pipelines and therefore the increasing methane leaks after all. You know, natural gas is methane. Uh, and so I just wondered in the case of this particular one that you're discussing, I hadn't heard your previous discussions, whether this really was meant as a new gas line for new customers or whether it was meant to replace a deteriorating gas line for existing customers. Because I think that is a, a statewide concern that, that if natural gas operators say, oh, what's the point of investing in new pipelines if we only going to need them for another five to 10 years? And so they don't fix the old ones, which are just, you know, leaking. That is such, such a great question, Martha. Um, I think, if I can take this, I, I think it's opposition to expanding the pipeline. Uh-huh, yeah. Think, I think fixing the leaks we would be in favor of. Yes, that, yes, yeah, well, thank you. And That's I also really... just wanted to, to make one more comment regarding the challenges with, with renters and, and upgrading. Have you all read Alicia Walker's comments uh, in last week's finance committee meeting? She talked rather eloquently about the challenges that renters face when the, the rents go up for whatever reason, she was referring to taxes, but uh, I would recommend reading it because it really does bring into focus some of the challenges that renters face. And, you know, for, for all these things like, like the importance of the efficiency upgrades and converting to electricity for, for rental buildings, you know, how those costs are handled is really something that 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 needs to be investigated from many points of view. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well, thank you. Keep up the good work. <laughs> thank you, Martha. And Jesse, will you make sure Martha's question about the pipeline gets put in the note, the minutes, so Andra can and and Laurie can address that in the future. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank Thanks, you. Martha. As always. Thanks. Any other members of the public would you like to comment at this time? If so, electronically raise your hand. All right, I see none at the time. Just reminding members of the public, you can always send comments as well by email or a good old fashioned pencil mm -hmm. on paper letters. Send those to Stephanie and um, those will be distributed to the committee. All right, then I think we are um, done with today's meeting. Any motion to adjourn? Come motion. On. Okay, there's a motion. A second. 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 Plain seconds. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you uh, in two weeks. Good job, chairing. Yeah, way to go, Steve. Oh, boy, this was <laughs> Thank you. Super proud Bye. of you.